All right, Duelists, the March 2023 Duelist Cup is here, and I wanted to review what I think are the top tier decks for this event. I'll probably do a separate video around some budget decks, but the Duelist Cup is very competitive, so let's just get straight into what are the most powerful decks for the event. With the release of the Ishizu cards, without a doubt, Ishizu is top tier. It is a very broken card design or archetype, and if you have these cards and you can utilize them, I think that the Chaos deck is by far at least right now, the strongest variation. I'm sure Tier Limit will take that over once it comes out, but by that point, the, the Yoshizu cards will definitely be li severely limited, probably. Uh, regardless, the reason this deck is very powerful is because the same reason Tier Limit was very powerful in TCG. You have the ability to mill very powerful cards into your graveyard and or banish pile that have uh, extension effects. So things like the Thunder Dragon packages um, all have effects in graveyard or, or, or when banished, and so you play cards like Allure of Darkness, that grass looks greener, left arm offering up here, uh, obviously the Millers in the Kelbeck and the Agito. And then once you start milling cards into your graveyard, um, you're going to be able to obviously play from cards in your hand, cards that you put on the field. But the reason that this deck and this archetype of, of the Ishizu cards are so broken is you also play from your graveyard, right? So if you think about it, when your opponent plays, you know, they set up a board, they may have a couple of interruptions and you have five cards, six cards in your hand when you go second to draw. And if they, if you can't out your opponent's board in those six cards, uh, you know, there's not much else you can do, right? If, if you don't end up drawing more cards or something. If the opponent shuts down all of your, like, add, add cards to my hand to extend my plays or draw cards, etc., it's it's game over. If you resolve any of your mills with this deck and you start putting cards into your graveyard, you know, let's say you resolve a Kelback and put five cards in your graveyard, let alone a Grass where you end up putting, like, 20 cards in your graveyard and you know, let's say 10 of them have plays that you can activate from the graveyard, you're going to be able to push through basically any board going second, right? And you're going to be able to set up an insanely powerful board. Uh, and if you go first, it's pretty much GG's if, if, if um, like, it's, I guess you could brick technically, but it's, it's really hard to do that, I think, with this deck, um, because you do play a number of different interruptions. Like, you don't even need to play Ash, because you can play Herald. Um, like, you only play Maxi, really, right? Like, this is how broken this deck is. So you do play a number of tuners. You know, Herald is a tuner, and despite it also having a very powerful um, uh, monster negate effect. Diviner is a, you know, uh, modulating tuner, essentially. You play Z Amon, which is a tuner. Um, and then you play some very powerful Chaos cards as well. So this deck, <clears throat> the reason it's so powerful is basically you just have infinite amount of resources if you can resolve some of your mills. Because if you resolve, like, one mill... You're likely resolving a number of other mills, so a bunch of cards are being dumped into the graveyard, and then you can extend your plays from there. You're also playing a mini punk package in there as well, as well as the Thunder Dragon package. So those are kind of the two engines of the deck. And then you're playing the Ishizu slash mill package, where again you just start dumping cards and then extending your plays from there. And then the the real power comes from your extra deck, right? So you start bringing out uh, Boreload Savage with up to two, or maybe even four negates, uh, probably just two though. The Chaos Ruler is kind of the heart and soul of the deck. This is the first card you probably synchro summon to do more extensions because it's excavating and sending more cards to the graveyard via mills. Um, you can do Shooting Star Dragon, uh, synchro as well. And then, of course, your your boss monsters, in addition to Borrowload Savage, is going to be like Baron, Chen Yang. And you, if you guys have played Master Duel, you know how powerful these two cards are. They're, they're kind of Sword Soul-esque. So again, you're kind of splashing a mini engine in there. Uh, you have Graveyard Control and Abyss Dweller. Uh, you have Dugaris for more extension or OTK. You can also play a variation of this that uses Cyberstein, because if that gets milled, you can go into Sprite Elf and bring it back um, and play that like Naturia card that shuts down all um, spell and traps, basically, which is an insane because it, that, that card also mills the exterior. Uh, and then you play Dark, you play Sprite Elf, you play Appaloosa for, you know, a four, a four material monster negate. You play Access Code for more OTK. Like this deck is absolutely insane. Um, and it's basically like a preview of what tier might look like. Obviously not 60 cards, but what tier will look like when it kind of comes to the game. But uh, yeah, I, I expect them to really nerf the uh, the Ishizu cards by then. But that's a very expensive deck, obviously. So if you can't, if you don't have all the cards or most of the cards already, I wouldn't recommend making this because without a doubt, this 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 deck is going to get absolutely hammered in the next ban list because the Ishizu cards are going to go. But let's take a look at some other options. So obviously. The, the second best deck, in my opinion, in the, in the format is going to be Sprite. Obviously, you can make a case for it being the best deck. Pure Sprite uh, or Runic Sprite. I'm just going to review the, the standard Sprite list here. Um, but the reason that I like regular Sprite is because 
uh, the hand traps that you can run in the, in the deck, I think offer you a little bit more utility right now over the limited runic engine that you will now run in the deck, basically, because the runic cards since the ban list had a number of their powerful cards reduced to two. So things like uh, runic destruction, I, th I think freezing curses is still at three, but uh, the other one that destroys special summons monsters is to two. So slumber's at two, destruction is at two, uh, no, Freezing Curses is at two. Okay, so the one that destroys Special Summon Monsters, Flashing Fire, is still at three. So the Runic Engine is still very strong, but uh, the interruptions with Hand Traps, I think, may offer you a little bit more utility now in, in, uh, in Master Duel. We are playing three Cosmic Cyclone to help deal with the Runic cards to a certain extent, as well as, like, like the Runic Fountain, that is, as well as some other back row decks that are come, becoming a little bit more popular. A lot of people are trying to play Floodgates, to stop Sprite, so Goes and Match is a big one that, that's uh, appearing in the meta. And basically Goes and Match will lock you either into the Dark or the Fire types, so you gotta be very careful and, and obviously Goes and Match will shut down a good portion of your extra deck as well because uh, it's only Sprite or Gigantic Sprite that is the Dark, Sprite Elf is the Fire, so keep that in mind as well. Uh, but this deck is pretty straightforward, it's using the Swap Frog engine, the Nimble Beaver engine, um, you have, I'm playing one Iperia. I don't think you need to play the Cap Shell. I think Iperia is probably a little bit better, but uh, again, that's up to personal preference. I'm opting for both two Carrot and two Red. In testing, this proved to be the most effective for me um, because there are times where my own Carrot was outed or I had to like, you know, use the effect of Carrot to negate a Spell or Trap and then I use Smashers to get another card off the field and then I had to banish the Carrot and just having another one that I know I could follow up with next turn is really, is really strong. So keep that in mind. I am opting to play one Gamma Burst here as well for potential OTK. So this is these Smashers and, and Gamma Burst are searchable uh, cards uh, via the Sprite Jet. So keep that in mind as well. But there's a number of different variations you can play with this deck. And it is a very powerful deck. Your extra deck, you also have some options. So I'm opting for Mannequin Cat here. Um, but you don't have to play this. And I'm opting for three Sprite Elf as well, just because it's very powerful. Um, you can put Unicorn in this deck. I probably should. Uh, I, actually, you absolutely should put it. So I'm, I'm missing a card. I, I got to take something out to put Unicorn in. But I thought Unchained Abomination might work well in this deck. Um, just because when you negate and destroy something with like these cards, uh, it would trigger the Unchained Abomination potentially. And what's nice is it's two plus monsters, including a Link monster. So if you Sprite Elf, uh, with IP, if you bring back IP with Sprite Elf, you can use the IP with two other cards on the field to make the Unchained. Whereas you can't do that for Mech Knight because Mech Knight says they have to be special summoned from the extra deck. So that means the first time you summon the IP, it's from the extra deck. You have to use that to make the Avermax. Otherwise, you have to bring out another monster from the extra deck. You can't recur IP from the extra deck and use it to make uh, Avermax. So keep that in mind. Um, but you should find a way to fit... Um, Unicorn and maybe take out Downard or, you know, if you don't want to try the Unchained Abomination. But this is just another boss monster because I find that Mech Knight, while it does win games for sure, if your opponent does out it somehow, uh, you don't really have a secondary boss monster to go into. And just having like a Unicorn on board may not be enough. I mean, Sprite is so powerful that you usually out whatever board the opponent puts up anyways. But you can definitely lose matches because you don't have a secondary boss monster to go into. So that's just kind of the thinking behind playing two Link 4s. But again, you can play the traditional route as well. For me personally, I am going with Floanderies. I'm returning to my roots. This is what got me back into the game, just because Floanderies was the uh, only deck that didn't cost $1,000 when Shizu tier format was running around. So this is the deck list that I'm choosing to go with. I've explained in other videos that um, Dark Ruler No More and Evenly Matched as a going second package is, is starting to become a staple in the game in Master Duel, just like it was when a Shizu tier format was eventually creeping up. So this is what I'm opting to run here. And the reason you run this in Floanderies now is um, because without Barrier Statue, you basically have to tailor the deck to go second because going first, you really only need like a one card starter, right? Like you need like map and a bird or just like a bird if it doesn't get negated, um, you're, you're, you're in business, right? So the rest of your cards are basically support cards for um, breaking boards and um, helping you set up your combo or, or digging into your deck with like the pots, for example, um, to get the resources that you need to, to get your one card uh, combo started. Obviously, this deck is very susceptible to negates. 
So you do have to be careful of that. But, you know, going second, like let's say against Sprite, they set up a carrot, a red, um, some other negates, let's say like Gin Buster or something. You Dark Ruler, you have nothing to worry about, right? Dark Ruler shuts down their whole board. Sprite usually doesn't play back row. Um, in my version, I think I did put in Imperms. So you might run into that. That might be the only issue. But you don't have to worry about any of these other negates, right? Or any of these other spell and traps. And if you shut down their monsters, there's nothing they can do. Because they're, they're, their Sprite Elf and their IP is going to be shut down. Their uh, Sprite Carrot, Sprite Red is going to be shut down. So their whole engine is basically shut down. And that's why Dark Ruler is becoming a pretty big staple in the deck right now. And then, you know, you Dark Ruler, you can easily follow up with Evenly Matched. And now you just basically win the game from there right any bird any any extension play will, will will likely have you winning the game from from that point two unexplored wins this is also an update to the deck just because the grind game without statue now is uh very prevalent for floanderies so just being able to draw potentially draw into unexplored wins and not needing to search it is very good and that's the same reasoning for playing to dreaming town again you don't have to play these ratios, but um, with the loss of some of the uh, lockdown potential with Flow Andres, I've opted to go into increasing the consistency of the deck a little bit by playing two Street, two Toucan, two Unexplored Winds, and two Dreaming Town. Because if I can draw like one of these starter birds and like a pot and dig in for a map or something, or like you know a terraforming, uh, I have my board breakers. I have um, one other card in my hand. Let's say if I can draw one of my searchable pieces as well. I can set up a very powerful board with very powerful interruptions, right? So that's kind of the thinking behind this deck and it's it's proved to be pretty good. I am main decking a Duster and a Lightning Storm, mainly just because um, people are running Floodgates for Sprite and that inadvertently hits Flow Under Ease as well. Um, like there can only be one, stops this deck entirely, um, goes and match, hurts you because the Robina and the Street are water and Eaglin and Toucan are wind as well as all your boss monsters are wind so you know you you do need to resolve Rubina to search for your deck and if you're locked into water then you can't play any of your your other cards skill drain is also in the format um but those are the only ones you really have to deal with thankfully no one's really playing zombie world or anything like that so you should be safe but this deck is a very good option as well especially if you already have flow under ease uh the next deck is branded so Branded is not top tier anymore. It's still very good. Um, but the reason it's not top tier is because it, it is going to have trouble playing through multiple interruptions um, just because you basically need five starter cards in your hand in order to kind of get get going. The good news, though, is that if you do get going, it's very hard to stop. Like if, obviously the, the core of the deck is Branded Fusion. If you resolve Branded Fusion, you're you're usually going to be pretty good to go at that point. Um, hopefully your opponent won't be able to stop you too too badly. Um, but because there are a lot of strong boards being put up via Sprite and stuff, I think Super Poly is a must in this deck now. Um, and the main reason is because you can out like the two Darks on their board um, or two, Mo well, we don't have Garua yet, but you can probably play Mud Dragon in here as well for some utility. But the, one of the main and core reasons why Super Poly is so good is because of the Earth Golem Attic Nister. So on the Sprite board, they end with IP Mascarena, which is a Cybers and a Link Monster in the Sprite Elf. And so being able to Super Poly away both of those and they can't respond to the Super Poly, bringing out Earth Golem, it just shuts down a, a huge interruption, right? It stops them from bringing out the Avermax during your turn and it allows you to kind of just continue to play through um, the opponent there. So that's good, because then from, from here, you can like go into battle phase, beat over Sprite Carrot, and then resolve your branded fusion, for example, and hopefully they don't have an Ash or something, but if they do, you do play Called By and uh, Crossbow Designator. Now there is no Maxi in this deck, but you could cut the Mercurier package, which is Mercurier, uh, Albion, and Branded Sword, or Branded Retribution. Retribution is probably the better one at this point. But you can cut those for max C. But the rest of the deck is pretty straightforward, right? You you're a combo deck. You you go branded fusion, Lubelion, Lubelion into Mirajay or Albion, and then extend your plays from there. Set up probably the ad libitum play, and then OTK your opponent on the next turn because that's what branded Despia does. Uh, unfortunately, you do still need to play the edge in package be, just because the bestials and stuff like that aren't in. Master Duel yet, but the Edge Package isn't that bad. Um, it gives you some nice additional resources that you can use for discarding, for, let's say for Lubelion or for Branded uh, Opening. So the deck is still viable, but it's definitely not top tier just because it's very hard to have enough gas to play through a lot of the negates. Uh, Labyrinth, 
while not top tier, is still potentially a threat, but it, it is very expensive to play the deck effectively. And the reason for that is because while you may have uh, accumulated the Labyrinth cards when the Runic Pact was here and you don't have to spend anything to craft these, to play the deck effectively now against Sprite, you, pre you pretty much need the Winged Dragon of Ross Sphere mode. That's going to out three of the opponent's monsters. So let's say Sprite Carrot, Sprite Red, and one of their Link monsters. Um, you will need Winged Dragon of Ross Sphere mode to, to kind of overcome Sprite. You do pretty much need Lord of the Heavenly Prison as well, just because when this card is triggered, um, if your skill drain isn't active, you're going to be able to search and set one of the virus cards. This card single-handedly beats Sprite, this or Deck Devastation Virus. Um, Eradicator Epidemic shuts down any kind of Runic uh, engine as well, as well as a lot of other decks that rely on Spell or Traps, let's say. Um, so it can be very powerful in that regard. Again, you are playing evenly matched. You Obviously, you're playing the Welcome Labyrinth, just one field spell, the pots to dig for your cards, and then a lot of interruptions in Torrential and Compulse. So this deck is very viable. Just basically getting a resolving a skill drain is usually GG's for a lot of decks. So uh, putting big bodies on the board like Lord and uh, Lovely with skill drain, your opponent likely won't be able to out that um, unless they have back row removal. So, um, you know, that can be a very viable option for you as well if you already have the core of the um, Labyrinth deck intact. The, again, the crappy part is you're gonna have to spend a hefty amount of ultra rares to make these cards. Um, but they, they do have utility, like like you, if you're following the TCG, you know that Labyrinth is a top tier deck right now in the TCG, just like it, it had some viability in OCG um, by the time Photon Hypernova dropped. So it's not like you're, you'll be crafting these cards and they'll be completely useless. They will have utility moving forward in the format of Master Duel as new cards are released, right? Like Cash Tira and things like that. So keep that in mind, but it is a heavy investment up front just for this event. Uh, the last deck I'll go over, maybe I'll go over two. I'll, I'll, I'll briefly cover Runic's, pure Runic stun here. Um, a lot of people think that this is not a viable deck anymore, but it absolutely is. Obviously, you'd want to fill out your extra deck a little bit more here. But pure Runic stun is definitely a viable strategy just because you can shut down your opponent quite heavily with Floodgates. Um, but the, the Runic engine in its purest form and being able to draw a bunch of cards is still very powerful. Yes, it does hurt the deck that some of the more powerful runic spells were limited, but you can still play enough runic spells where you can generate a ton of card advantage and people don't expect the pure runic engine, right? You have a lot of interruptions obviously on your field. So shutting down mm -hmm. your opponent's board with traps and then playing through your runic engine is a good way to stun your opponent. And most people aren't prepared to play against pure runic, right? Everyone is preparing for Sprite. And then the last deck, a little bit of a budget pick, I guess, to end the video off with is Rika Sun Avalon. Uh, so this deck basically plays no core ultra rares. Uh, the ultra rares that you play are your staple hand traps, and you could play Dark Ruler and evenly mash as a going second package. If you opted not to play a going second package, this is kind of what the deck looks like in its core. Um, again, these are staples, two called by one cross out. Uh, you don't have to play the hand trap version. But the problem with Rika, it's a very powerful deck for sure because with the with the field spell finally being released in Master Duel, you can really shut down a lot of your opponent's plays by tributing off of their cards. But Rune, uh, Rika really, really suffers against board breakers and board breakers are becoming more common in Master Duel. Um, you basically have to rebuild your board after it's broken, right? You don't have too many ways to interrupt. Like if your opponent evenly matches you, even if you're playing hand traps, like there's nothing you can do right like if you're playing the hand trap version that i just had laid out your only response to evenly match is hoping you have a one of cross out to cross out the evenly match right so if you go first you set up a really good board with rika um it's really hard for you to have an interruption i guess you know you you, you there are ways to set up the interruptions um like hyper tie on or whatever uh during your opponent's turn when a card or effect is activated detach one material of the same type monster spell or trap and negate the activation and destroy the card. That's like an interruption that you can maybe go into off of like the, the Strena, I think. Um, so this card says you can special. So if uh, where is it? If this card with Xyz material is tributed, so again, if you tribute it for a Rika card effect, special summon rank one, rank five or higher planned Xyz monster from your extra deck or graveyard, and attach this card to it as material. So you you can you can bring this out. Um, and have the Xyz monster attached to it, which will give you a monster negate, 
but again if you get evenly matched you're gonna have a you're gonna have to have a trap card attached to it in order to detach that trap card to to negate an evenly match right so it's very hard for you to set up this board to play through a board breaker and the nice thing about rika is like you you can rebuild your board the problem is if the opponent breaks your board you're gonna have to play through their board now and uh rika can have a little bit of a hard time doing that but it is a fun deck to play for sure and it is viable um because if your opponent can't break your board uh you basically control the match and it's very hard to wrestle control back from rika at that point um, between the sun avalon cards and the rika cards that you are able to set up so those are the decks that i think can play an effect uh or can be very effective in the duelist cup uh let me know what you're playing if you've watched this video to the end uh, i will be doing hopefully a budget deck video um, because I have some other accounts that I'll be building budget decks on and playing the Duelist Cup with those to see if I can make some progress. But on my main account, I'll be sticking with Flow Andres, like I said. So if you're interested in seeing some Flow Andres play, how is it faring in the meta today? Let me know and I'll maybe do another montage like I did for the last Duelist Cup where we went on a 17 win streak in, in from stage at the end of stage one into stage a good amount into stage two. So that was pretty impressive uh, for me personally, just because I was still newer to the game. But um, yeah, I'll do another montage, see how far I can get with Flow Andres in, in uh, the new meta. So thanks for watching, guys. That's it for this video. Quantum is out.